Hello everyone, today is Sunday, October 7, 2018, and I'm coming at you with a video to talk about the physicality of gang stalking. And if you've watched my videos, you know that I have the, you know, I take the stance that it is both physical and spiritual in nature. And, you know, we have, you know, definitely a wicked, evil, corrupt element that's behind the organized stalking and harassment. Um... You know, and that's the spiritual side of it, but the physical side are the things that take place in people's lives. Um, and speaking of that, you know, you have a lot of people that will say, you know, the government's not stalking you. Why would the government want to stalk you? Why would the government waste all their money and time on just little you or you're nobody? You know, and the list goes on, you know, as to all the, you know, reasons why, you know, a government would not or could not stalk and harass an individual. However, there is validity and truth behind governments stalking and harassing their people who seem to be a threat to their organization or their operation. And I'm going to specifically talk about the United States of America. Um, as a target individual, many of us have this you know, consistent story that when we realized we were being targeted and stopped overtly, we started noticing the color red popping up, being sensitized to the color red. Um, you know, sometimes it's a combination of red, white, and black, but predominantly the color red is what goes along with someone being gang stalked. That's something that you, you know, will notice frequently. And there's significance behind that. Our government had what was known as the Red Scares. We had two of them. It's also, you know, it goes by the other name of the Red Menace. Now, what this is, is the Red Scares. The first one we had was um, following the Bolshevik Russian Revolution of 1917. The second one was in the late 1940s, all the way through the 1950s, during the Cold War with the Soviet Union, where America was fearing communism uh, was permeating the American politics, you know, it was infiltrating the American politics. So if you sympathized, you know, with the opposition or you sympathize with the so-called opposition, if you sympathize with the other side, you could be deemed a political dissident or a political threat or a disloyal, you know, disloyal to your country. Now, um, what, these, these people who, um, but the communists were considered the Reds, you know, for their allegiance to the red Soviet flag. That's where it gets its its name. Um, so the Red Scare, you know, some of the tactics that they used, you know, were by putting people, you know, namely like federal employees and stuff like that, putting them under surveillance. There was actually an act that was uh, put into order, you know, that required anybody who was a federal employee to be analyzed, you know, and, you know, again, we know that the enemy likes to twist words a little bit. So analyze, you know, that can, you know, seem very innocent, but in reality, it's basically the person was placed under, you know, 24 hour surveillance. They were monitored. Everything they do and did was monitored to make sure that they were remaining loyal to the government and the house of the United States of America. Um, other people that were kind of thrown into this were the Hollywood film industry. And doesn't that kind of ring a bell? Doesn't that kind of sound familiar right now? You know, you see a lot of, um, you know, top producers and um, actors and people who, you know, have been a prominent influence in Hollywood for quite some time. All of a sudden, you know, just out of the blue, you know, there's these campaigns that come out and all of a sudden they're, 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 there's these sexual deviants, they're, you know... Um, being accused of all sort of, you know, misconduct and things like that, it leaves room to question, you know, are these accusations in fact true or are they, you know, trumped up allegations, you know, and speaking of, you know, Trump, you see that they do it to, you know, our, cur our current president, Donald Trump right now, you know, they've tried to find all sorts of dirt on you. If you go against the grain, they've got to try to find a way to sm smear your name and, um, run it into the ground so nobody likes you and nobody ha wants to have anything to do with you. It's the same thing they do with target individuals and I'll get into um, you know just the 
everyday citizens being targeted here in just a minute. But back to that, um, it, you know, that during that time, you know, with the Red Scares, anyone who was in the Hollywood film industry, whether, you know, top producers, actors, whatever, they've used their platform to speak out or sympathize with the other side, then they would find themselves being um, barred and blacklisted from, you know, finding work or continuing in, you know, in the industry. Um, and speaking of that order that I mentioned not too long ago, uh, on March 21st, 1947, President Harry S. Truman issued an executive order 9835 which was also known as the loyalty order, and this mandated that all federal employees be analyzed to determine whether or not they would be loyal to the government. Um, and this was like, you know, this was this kind of, you know, took the nation by shock and surprise because, you know, the United States always prides themselves on being, you know, you know, liberal, you know, liberty, you know, freedom. You know, that's why people come for the American dream, you know, you know, for the freedom and um, the illusion of freedom in reality. But um, nevertheless, um, you know, so that order, 9835, was issued in March of 1947. And so um, something else that was similar to that, um, you know, I'm quite sure you've heard the term McCarthyism. You know, and that is the congressional investigator, U.S. Senator Joseph R. McCarthy, 1908 to 1957, um, was the person that was most closely associated with anti-communist crusade. Um, and he used what, you know... And I, uh, before I get ready to like go right into this, I want you to think if you know if you're a target individual, I want you to think about some of the tactics and the things that are done to you that you've gone through, and just hear me out on what I'm getting ready to say about McCarthy. So he used hearsay and intimidation to establish himself as a powerful and feared figure in American politics. So many of us as target individuals, we know that. You know, smear campaigns, slander, um, all sorts of like rumors are spread about us to get people to fear us or to dislike us, distrust us, you know, ultimately hate us and have want to have nothing to do with us. Um, so these tactics that came from, you know, the McCarthyism, you know, jokes, the Senator McCarthy, you know, they, they've been revised and revamped and you know, modernized and used in what we know as gang stalking and harassment today. Um, so what he did is he leveled, meaning, you know, he, you know, spread these rumors and, you know, gassed up basically these lies that, so, you know, celebrities, you know, were disloyal, um, intellectuals, people who thought outside the box, you know, who could be considered revolution in Aries, you know, they, you know, end up getting these smear and slander campaigns thrown on them. You know, if they disagreed with his political views, this cost them, you know, their reputation and their jobs. When you think about it, does that not sound like what targeted individuals go through today? The only difference is it's not just an individual that is the powerful and feared figure. It is the actual what's known as the deep state, you know, the dark, you know, dark ops that are behind shutting people up and shutting people down if you go against their order, if you go against what they're trying to establish and have established. Um, you know, what, you're, what they want you to do, again, is just kind of go along with the illusion of liberty, the illusion of freedom, and the illusion of, you know, having rights, you know, to think and sympathize in any direction that you want, you know, as a citizen of the United States of America. They want you to go along with the illusion and not question the reality. Um, 
so back to you know how I said I was going to talk about the civilian level of it you know not you know somebody that's you know in Hollywood or you know, any political figure you know Americans felt the Red Scare on a personal and social level um, you know thousands of people were considered you know communist sympathizers um, they had their lives disrupted they were hounded by law enforcement alienated from friends and family and fired from their jobs for nothing more than expressing and exercising their democratic rights and um, you know sp speaking on my personal um, experience as a target individual I have been one of those individuals that think and question outside the box you know when 9-11 happened I, di I didn't just you know go with the narrative that was being put on you know mainstream media you know I did for years you know I did my own research I looked into things I watched other people um, you know watched other people's videos and other people's you know read other people's blogs and things like that about their opinions and their fact findings of you know what took place on 9-11 and despite the evidence it's like right in front of our face they, they, they want us you know do the smoke and mirrors and tell you ah you know nothing to see here nothing up the sleeve you know nothing underneath my hat they want you to kind of just go along with the okie doke eat it up swallow it digest it and put a smile on your face as though you enjoy and believe what they're telling you they don't want you to question so if you're ever someone who if you if you're someone who's ever done that if you've ever researched 9-11 if you ever spoke out or made a tweet or you know, uh, some sort of online post, you know, that does not agree with the narrative, you know, or questions the narrative, then you can find yourself being, you know, considered a threat, you know, to the safety of the United States of America, because they, you know, in their little small mind, they think that you're going to sympathize with whoever they whomever they've deemed an enemy you know they don't want you to think outside of what they're telling you um, you know so you can find yourself you know on the receiving end of being analyzed as they want to put it you know the innocent term analyzed or in reality surveilled put on a list to be blacklisted monitored and watched um, so I just wanted to come on here. I think I'm going to go ahead and end that here because, you know, many people um, disagree, you know, that the government would not or could not waste their time on stalking and harassing someone who's deemed not really a threat. Actually, knowledge is, you know, a huge threat. You know, knowledge is something they can't put a price tag on. Although they try, you know, but knowledge is, you know, a huge threat, you know, against the lies and against the deception because it doesn't work on you anymore. Kind of like if you were, you know, a child and, you know, the little, the little hand trick where it looks like, oh, you're, you know, your you use your thumb and it looks like your fingers sliding up and down, up and down. It's like, you know, once you get older and you realize, ah, gotcha you know it's not you know you're you're not really sliding your index finger up and down it's just your it's just your right hand thumb you know it's like once it doesn't work on you anymore then they have to completely assassinate you you know your character and some people you know like on the political level of it some people have actually been physically assassinated behind speaking out and I won't you know go on to that but you can you know, imagine, you know, who those individuals are that I'm speaking about. Anytime you go against, you know, the powers that be, you can find yourself on the receiving end. And you don't even have to go against them. You just have to question. And that's not acceptable, according to them. So, for anyone who believes that the government would not stalk and harass, use their institutions such as law enforcement um, 
and their powers, you know, their so-called powers, to shut you up and get you to shut your mouth. Do a little research. Look at the history. You know, you have to do a little research because if you notice with our government, I'm just going to go ahead and close on this note. I keep going on, but I'm just going to go ahead and close on this note. If you notice our government, anytime someone speaks out, look on, look online, anytime someone speaks out, oh, it's Russian bots, it's the Russians, it's the Russians. Um, you know, we, we got to stay in the Middle East because, you know, there's a, there's a war on terrorism. You know, we got to, you know, it's everybody else. You know, it's, America can do no wrong. They're looking out for the interest of the entire world because, you know, that's what they do. You know, they want everybody to have liberty and freedom. You know, if you think about it, since we've been over there in the Middle East, America has seen the worst opioid epidemic that it has ever seen. It's kind of like in the 80s when we had the CIA, you know, crack cocaine situation. You know, they were just dumping crack cocaine into, you know, the urban cities up and down the West Coast. You know, and you always have to have a fall guy, you know, someone that takes the takes the fall. Um, you know, right now you have, you know, the opioids, you have people like tripping out on these synthetic drugs, you know, mixed with the real stuff. Um, you know, you have guns just being dropped off in crates over in Chicago. You know, but no one questions that. You can't question those type of things because when you do, you're going to catch the heat because you're supposed to just believe that, you know, this opioid ep epidemic is just, you know, magically appearing up. The crack epidemic just magically appeared. These guns just magically appeared. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have these, you know, left, right against, you know, the right to bear arms, take away the right to bear arms. You know, it's just this, this illusion of, you know, birds, you know, the feathers of the same bird. You know, you have left wing, white, right wing. It's from the same bird. You know, it's, it's like, let's appear like we're not getting along. Let's appear like there's a division. Let's appear like there's a democracy. Telling you what your itching ears and eyes want to see and hear. But what is the truth? <laughs>